welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today sees the return of Zetamath to the channel. It's not been a very long gap between, Z uh, between when Zetamath last appeared, because actually Zetamath was a collaborator uh, in the puzzle that Mark did last night. But this is just Zetamath on his own with a puzzle called Distinction. And we've had this recommended several times since it first appeared, which I think actually was quite recently. Um, but I will read you the rules to this one in a moment. Apparently it is approachable, whatever that means in the current world. I do not know. A um, couple of things to mention first. I think the first thing I want to say today uh, is, have you looked at last night's video, which we called the ultimate miracle Sudoku? If you haven't, I would urge you to have a look at that puzzle. It's by Emre Kolotoglu. And it is quite remarkable. In fact, let me just show you it. Yeah, th this is the puzzle. And you can see there are no given digits. And the clues that we are given are simply question marks. It is absolutely amazing that this puzzle exists. The question marks are sort of a hybrid of X sums and sandwich clues. And they have to, basically all they're saying is that in these columns, those types of clues are the same. Uh, uh, it took me a very long time to solve it, um, but it really is, it's a stunning achievement that Emre has created here. So I thought some of you, if you didn't see last night's video, you might be interested in that. Now the next thing I need to say is a very, very happy birthday to Lisa Battersby. Uh, Lisa, your husband Stephen got in touch with us and said that you enjoy the channel a lot. And I know that the two of you have a very young person at home, a new daughter, just three months old. Um, and I'm not sure how you've got the time um, uh, or the willpower to stay awake through one of my videos, but I'm very pleased that you enjoy the channel and I hope you've had a great birthday today. And of course, a big slice of cake. Um, now, the next bit of news is about is for our patrons over on Patreon. We have a very special new video for you by Philip Newman. Now, many of you will know Philip Newman if you've been following the channel for any amount of time. Uh, a, a, a setter of world renown and recently created this world's hardest classic Sudoku, uh, which many of you have had a go at. It was called Palpatine, Palpatine's Design. And Philip has very kindly made a video explaining, I suppose, A, how he came up with the idea behind that puzzle, B, a load of stuff about very hard classical Sudoku techniques, C, how to solve Palpatine's design, and D, also running through why he chose the, the winners of the competition. And I need to say a very hearty congratulations to Emmanuel, who goes under the nickname Pulsar77 online. And Emmanuel, you are going, you, you, your solution was judged the best overall solution. Um, so we're going to be sending you a Bubber is you key. And I'm also going to be sending a Bubber is you key to Bill Murphy down there in Australia. Um, Bill is a doyen of the Discord server and Philip judged your entry bill as the most amusing. I think primarily because it kept referring to your secret love of Mary Elizabeth Winstead and how Hopefully that puzzle would lead you and she to get together. Well, I, I hope that's true. I'm sure Mary Elizabeth Winstead watches watches Cracking the Cryptic. And Mary, if you're watching, if you get in touch, I'm happy to pass on Bill's details. Um, now, what, so, yeah, so anyway, that video is over on Patreon right now for those of you who are patrons of the channel who like that sort of thing. It's a one hour video, so lots and lots of extra content there. Now, let's get on with Distinction by Zetamath. What are the rules for this one? They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Each purple line must contain a set of consecutive non-repeating digits. These digits can appear in any order. So these lines are normal Renban lines. So let's look at this one, which I was about to put a nine on to, to make it nine, eight, seven, six, and I've just realized that will not work. So now I will put a one on it instead. So if that was a one, that was a two, that was a three, and that was a four, that would be a valid way of filling this Renban line. Now, um, once you know there's a one on it, it has to be one, two, three, and four, because the digits have to be consecutive. But unlike thermometers, which are, which obviously have to, if you find a thermometer in the Sudoku, it has to increase from the bulb end. With a Remban line, you can put the digits in any order you want. So we can we can muddle them up. We can have the two down there, we can have the one here, we can have the two there, etc., etc. Lots of different permutations. Um, now, there is, there is more to the rules though today. Additionally, no two purple lines can contain exactly the same set of digits. E.g., if one length three line, let's look at this one, uh, contains the digits three, four, and five, no other length three line can contain those exact digits. 
Uh, okay, so that one could not be 3, 4, 5 either then. Um, however, a length 4 line containing 2, 3, 4, 5... Um, how's that going to have to look? Something like that. Uh, and a length 3 line containing 4, 5, 6... Uh, um, let's put 4, 5, 6 in that one. Would both be acceptable. Okay, well that may, that's that's completely how I would have understood the rules without the example actually. So all that's saying is that if we work out that one of the three cell rem bands, one of the three cell purple lines is three four five, you can't put three four five on another one, and then the four cell rem bands sort of sit in their world apart. So if, although this does have three four five on it, it also has the two. So it is not it doesn't have exactly the same contents as this one because it also has a two. So that sort of makes sense to me. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, I have to say, I am minded to think that this will be about mod three because I know something about three cell rem bands of which there seem to be plenty in this puzzle. And that is that the digits on a three cell rem band must always be, if you add them up, you will get a number divisible by three. And that is because if you think about the algebra of a three cell purple line, one of the digits on it will be the middle of the consecutive sequence. So let's call that digit X. I don't know if it'll let me do that actually. Maybe it will if I change, hang on, let me just see if I can do this. Is there a way to turn on, um, turn on something? Or maybe it's only on the on test that I can do it. Hang on, let me just see if I can do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a go putting in putting in letters here this might be complete completely frivolous and a fool's errand letter tool on hold alt for shift for letters oh good grief okay so oh, wow okay so now now everything's kicking off so i think now if i press alt on the keyboard and i go there oh sven look at sven's software it's just amazing so now i'm going to label this X. I can label it X just by pressing Alt. So let's say that this is the middle digit on this Ren band, i.e. The, the digit that's the middle size of the three digits on the line. Then one of the digits will be slightly lower than X, so it'll be X minus one. The other digit will be slightly higher than X, so it will be X plus one. So if you sum up those three digits together, you will get three X, and three X is obviously divisible by three. That was all a very long way of showing that, but it was quite a, an advert for this remarkable software that Sven has made. Um, now, yeah, so what was I thinking about three X? I got distracted with all, all the algebra. So yeah, so if I know that a three cell rem band is divisible by three, let's have a look at where the three cell rem bands live in this puzzle and see if we can use that to our advantage. I'm just going to highlight them for a moment. Um, and no, <laughs> okay. That doesn't seem to do anything. I might well be missing a trick here. I'm not seeing how to use that, sorry. Okay, so that's not the first way to look at this puzzle. So maybe it's the, okay. So my next hunch, and that's all it is, is to look at the two cell rem bands. And the only reason I want to look at these is this looks, um, it looks like Zetamath has sort of hidden a pattern in here. These two cell rem bands, you know, it's not like there's just one of them hidden in a corner acting as a disambiguating pattern. That looks like, it almost looks like Zetamath wanted to make this one vertical, but then didn't. Right, I can tell you something about the central cell. That is orange. It's also odd <laughs> because both of those things begin with O. Now, why is this orange? Well, it's because it, it's because of the nature of a two cell rem band. If you think about any two cell purple line in this puzzle, it contains consecutive digits. So it contains an odd and an even digit. Now, in any row of the Sudoku, you've got the digits one to nine once each. So there are only four even digits, the digits two, four, six, and eight. And we know that they must be disposed along these four lines because each one of them individually needs an even digit. 
So that one must be the spare one and that must be an odd digit. Now that means that Oh, <laughs> that means this domino at the top, unfortunately, is an odd and an even digit because we're going to have three evens in those six cells and we're going to have four odds in those seven cells. So we need one more odd and one more even at the top of the column. Uh, and that's absolutely useless. Um, Oh my goodness me. Right, okay, I'm not on the same wavelength yet as Z Math. Now, Z Math, what else have you hidden in your puzzle then? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight two cell rembands. Which is all of them. Ah. Ah, okay, right, that's interesting. That is all of them, isn't it? Yes, it is, because, right. Okay, so now we need to use the rule that says that no, none of these purple lines can contain the identical constituents. And let's think about all the possible combinations of two cell lines that could exist in this puzzle. There's gonna be a one and a two somewhere in it, a two and a three, a three and a four. Well, yeah, this would be all possible two cell combinations. So one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine. There are eight different combinations. And that makes sense because as we go up the digits, one, we go from the one, two pair to the two, three pair, etc. When we reach eight and we do the eight, nine pair, we can't go up again and do the nine, 10 pair. That doesn't exist. So there are only eight pairs and there are exactly eight two cell rem bands in this puzzle. So every single possible combination is represented and that is very beautiful indeed because now that digit is odd and well and it's the same as that one isn't that amazing because and the reason for that of course is that whatever this digit is it must be one of the digits from one to nine and it must therefore appear on a two cell remban in this puzzle because all digits appear on at least one two cell remban yeah, so the one, the one and the nine only appear on one two cell rem band because once you've done the one and the two, you can't do a one and a three or anything. So the one and the one gets, the one has only one option, but the two will be on two different rem bands because it will be on the one two rem band and also on the two three rem band. So yeah, so every digit is on a two cell rem band once. And this digit is ruled out of all of those and that one. So it must be there. And therefore this digit is odd. Um, so let's actually label the options up. Yeah, okay, because that means that one is on a rem band with an odd number, so that's even. I think we use, we use blue for even. So that's two, four, six, or eight. Uh, oh, right, now this digit, this orange digit must be on this rem band. Which, uh, hang on a minute, I'm not understanding quite what this does. Um, this must be the break-in though, it's too cute. In fact, well this is, yeah, let's go back to what I said at the start, which is I thought Zeta Math had wanted to create this sort of a perfect pattern with this being a, this being a vertical domino well actually that would have broken the puzzle now i'm realizing because there would have been eight different there would have been all eight different possible two cell rem bands and this digit could never have appeared on all of them so there had to be a break in the pattern um okay <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Um, oh dear. Four cell rem bands. We have got, got three of those, I want to say. The problem with a four cell rem band is it's far less interesting. Um, because I, I don't think we know anything about the modulus of the sum of the digits on a four cell rem band. And 
well, I suppose we can say it's got two odds and two even numbers on it. Which I don't think is helping us. Even though Zetamath has been kind enough to give me two given digits today. Um, okay. Is it, have I missed something on the three cell REM bands? That's probably what's happened. Let's do the three cell REM bands again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I think that's all of them again. Let's highlight those again, um, in particularly garish yellow. So we've got seven of these. How many are we meant to have of these if we had all of them? Oh, ah. Ah, right, okay, sorry, I had not appreciated this at all when I highlighted this last time. Yeah, uh, that's right, there are only seven, three, there are only seven th possible combinations of three cell REM bands, aren't there? Because one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, etc. And when you get to seven, you do seven, eight, nine, but there, there's no combination associated just with eight, nine, because you can't go eight, nine, ten. And obviously then you can't go 9, 10, 11. So, that, so as, as you increase the length of a REN band, you reduce the number of possible REN bands associated with that length. Right, okay, so that means that we have to have every single possible version of three cell REN bands in this combination. Oh, I know what this might be. I know what this is. Uh, if this is right, this is going to be very interesting. Let me just have a stare at this for a second before I do some highlighting I'm going to regret. Um, I can't see it. I can't see it without doing the highlighting. Sorry, I'm going to have to highlight this. So I'm just going to highlight those cells in black. I'm also going to highlight all of the two cell REM bands as well. like that. Now, what I'm wondering, yeah, this is right, I've got it, I've got it, right, this, this is absolutely ridiculously clever, and it's also very deeply surprising to me that this is where we went with this, because this is almost a set type thing going on, but it's this sort of strange way to think about it. So what I'm, what I'm thinking is that if we think about the nature of all of the black cells, we know that they are all the possible two cell REM bands that exist and all the possible three cell REM bands that exist. So how many ones and how many nines do we think that there are in the black cells of this puzzle? Well, we know on the two cell REM band, the only time the one appears is in the one, two. And we know the only time the nine appears is in the eight, nine. So there is, in the two cell REM bands, there is one eight, or sorry, one, one ah, there's one one and one nine. But in the three cell REM bands, it's the same. The one, two, three combo is the only time the one appears. The seven, eight, nine combo is the only time the nine appears. So within all of the black cells, there are two ones and two nines only. But, but look, if we look at the sort of Maltese cross in this grid, if we look at this shape, that's five complete boxes of the Sudoku. So in that, in that shape, there must be five ones and there must be five nines. And therefore I've got to fit in, I've got to fit into these cells. Let me get this right. Those cells there, they have to contain the blue, oh, uh, uh, sorry, and I'm now polluting my blues and, hang on, let me uncolor these ones. Hang on, I've got to keep the black. <laughs> I'm gonna just remember that thing about the middle and these two being the same. So, right. So what we're saying, what I'm saying is there must be three ones in the blue cells and three nines in the blue cells, and that's difficult and actually, it's completely beautiful. It's completely beautiful, not just because the pattern I've made is actually quite pretty, but 
how are we going to put three ones in the blue cells? Now in row four, I can put one one, and in row six, I can put one one. I can't put two ones in either of those cells. So in all of those cells, there can be exactly two ones. So now I need to put a one either here or here to complete the, qu the quota of ones. But of course, the same logic I've just done applies identically to nines. I can put a nine in row four in a blue cell. I can put a second nine in row six in a blue cell, but I've still got to put one more nine into the blue cells. So the nine will have to go there. So this is a one nine pair. And if this is a one nine pair, that digit there, which we know is the same as the central cell, is a one or a nine. <laughs> That's just, I mean, how is, how? oh, so this, this even digit is, is, a, is an extreme even digit because it's got to be next to one or nine. Sorry, and I know people don't like black, the black on the blue highlighting. Let me just get rid of that. I was just thinking about that from the perspective of um, trying to do this, this sort of analysis. Ah, uh, right, now, 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 now. No, ah, uh, yeah, well, my brain's going mad now. Right, now look, I've got a one nine pair in column four. Now that means when we were thinking about the fact we needed to put a one and a nine in row, row four and row six, they can't go in these two cells anymore because there's a one nine pair already looking at those two cells. So they, they get de-bluified. And if they get de-bluified, now, the 1 and 9 I know exist in blue in row 6 have to be in here, so they're in there, which means these are not 1 and 9, so they get de-bluified, and I'm only left with two blueified cells in row 4, which have to now be 1 and 9. QED! Um, now, let my brain go back to my earlier thought, which was that this was meant to be approached, but that is not e That's really, really... It's beautiful logic, don't get me wrong, it is beautiful logic, but you have to sort of, you really have to be careful about counting your your Renban pairs and triples, and then thinking about the composition of the totals, and then noticing the overlap with the, with, with the cross, which, all of which strikes me as being not easy. Um, it's taken me 22 <laughs> minutes to do it. I'm sorry about that. Maybe this is just completely my brain not working today but no uh, anyway whatever it is i love it now i can do some sudoku now because look i've got one nine one nine i've got to put therefore ones and nines into those three cells in row five on that one can't be a one or a nine because it sees a one nine in its column so that is a one or a nine which means this is an ah aha i have a digit that's an extreme even digit it's either two or eight because it's got to be consecutive with one or nine and it's not two. So that's eight, that's nine, that's one. We know that's the same as that. So that's one, that's two, that's nine. So nine is now in one of these two cells and whichever one, ooh, well, it would be very useful if it's there because that this Remban would be determined whichever one of these is nine is actually useful. Oh, yes, yeah, I, I know which one it is. It's not this one, because if the nine is there, it has to go with eight and it will be the same. It will be a zygotic, a zygotically identical twin to its friend there, and that won't work. That's not allowed by the rules, so that can't be nine. So the nine goes up here and that's huge, because if that's nine, eight must go here, seven must go here. So now eight is in one of these cells. Um, and that's very exciting, but unfortunately it might, uh, actually I don't need the blue now, do I? Let me just de-blueify the whole grid, I think, while I stare at this and try and work out what's going on. Um, So, ah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, there's a one on that Renban. So that must be a one, two, three Renban. So now in, in our three cell Renbans, we've got a nine, eight, seven. Well, yeah, we've got nine, eight, seven and a one, two, three. 
So actually, if there was an 8 on this REN band, it would have to not be the 987 REN band, it would have to be the 876 REN band. Uh, two, 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 uh, two must be one of those two cells, because of this two, this two, and this two all interacting. If two is on the line, that would have to be a three, because it couldn't be a one. So two, three. Um, oh dear, now I'm stuck, I think. Um, oh no, no, hang on, look at column, column six by Sudoku. Those must be fours, fives, and sixes. So that digit needs to be three, four, five, six, or seven. Are we prepared to, yes, I am. I'm not proud, three, four, five, six, or seven. Um, okay. So, now what do we do? That is the next question. We have got to think about, I don't actually know what to do now. I thought it would, I thought it would be more obvious, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything. Uh, one, two, three here, where's, uh, we don't know where three is in this box. These squares are threes, fours, fives, and sixes. So that cell can't be three, four, five, or six, because it sees this one on its REN band. So whatever these three are, obviously it can't be the same as this, but this is also not able to be this. And as this is a quadruple, that therefore restricts this value, which also can't be eight. And actually it can't be one or nine, because one and nine are not consecutive with three, four, five, and six. So that square is a bit restricted. It's not the same as seven. So it's two or seven. I was going to say it's not the same as seven different digits, but actually it is the same. It, it could be the same as seven itself. So this is two or seven. So if this is two, this is three, four, this is five, six. Uh, I don't see what's wrong with that. What about if this is seven? If this is seven, this is five, six then. So this is three, four. I can't see what's wrong with that. Okay. Ah, okay. Nine in this box is restricted because I can't put nine on that REM band. And I remember I can't put nine on that REM band because I tried to do it in the example when we were looking at the puzzle and I noticed that eight couldn't go on this REM band. So that means that in this box, nine, nine has to be in this domino, look. So nine is in one of those three squares. Oh, right, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I just noticed that can't be an eight. But where where does nine go in this box? It can't go it can't go on this ren ban, or this ren ban would be nine eight seven and be the same as this one, which is not allowed by the rules. So that's not nine. This is nine. That's nine. This is one. This is eight. Nine nine is almost locked onto this ren ban which would make this REM band 9876, which would then not have to be the same as, oh, okay, that's, we haven't, right, we don't know about these at all, actually. We know that one is not 9876, but we don't know about this one. So we don't know what this is. Um, what else have we got here? We've got eight has to be in one of these three cells. One. Uh, don't, uh, I don't know. I've got eight, oh look, yeah, I've got eight on this REN band and it can't have nine on it. So those two squares have got to be six and seven. So one in this row has to be, ah, beautiful. So one has to be on this little REN band. And once one is on a REN band, we know the composition of the REN band. That's one, two, three, and four with a one in one of those. So that's not two. So seven only has two possible positions in row three. 
uh, what it, oh I see if that's two then that can be two and that wouldn't necessarily break the puzzle so oh um now what do we do now where should we look we shall look at seven no seven still got three possible positions in box one oh one has to be in one of those two cells in box three by sudoku now oh that just follows from the one being here okay um So we've now got a 987 Remban. We've got a 123 Remban. I've got an 876 Remban. So I need to have I need to have a 234 Remban. Which could be that one. Oh. Oh, okay. So where yeah, where is the 234 Remban in this puzzle? Now that's one possibility. Now it can't be this one because this two rules it out and it can't be that one and it can't be this one I think it might be able to be that one let me just have a look at that so is it just two possibilities for the two three four ren ban I want to say yes I, I might I might be missing one of these uh, I might be missing one another three cell ren ban I can't see any other options and this can't be a two, three, four rem band, can it? Because it it can't have two and three on it. I could put two or three in this cell, but I can't put both of them in. So I may be wrong about this, but I think this is the only one that can be two, three, four. It's a weird it's weird scanning you have to do in this puzzle because I'm having to scan all the ren bands and count their lengths and check. I think. I think these are the only two candidates though. So if that's right, this has to be the two on this two, three, four Ren ban. So that means these two squares are not. So this is a five, six pair, which makes this a seven and this a six. So now six has to live in one of those squares in box one. two comes out oh that two has to appear on that rem band so it has to go there so this becomes one oh i see this becomes a one three four triple two has to live down here in box seven this square has got to be four five six or seven and that is very useful for some reason i can't appreciate um Ah, right, <laughs> now we get stuck again. What we should look at now is... Hmm, no. I want to say that you can't put seven on here because don't I, I need to put eight in this column and eight can't accompany nine in this column because the nine's already been used. So in this column, wherever the eight goes, and it's going to be in one of those four cells. It must accompany seven on its remban. So that square I don't think can be seven. And that is the world's most useless deduction. Oh well, apart from it gives me a four, five, six triple in column in box five I've just seen. Well, and and therefore actually that's quite good because now a three in this box is suddenly placeable here, and that means I should be able to deduce what this digit is. Because it can, well, I can, it can't be two, so it's got to be four. So that is now a five, six pair. And this down at the bottom must be a seven, eight pair. Which means these two squares have got to be a five, six pair, I think. And that square has got to be, oh, now I've got a five, six, two cell Remban, but I can have a five, six, three cell Remban. So this square has got to either be four or seven. Right, I understand what I've got to do next, because now I'm going to look at the remaining rem bands. And doesn't one of these rem bands have to be a three, four, five rem band? I think it does. And I haven't got one of those unless it's this one. <laughs> so I think this, 
I know, I'm not sure I know what that one is, but this three is ruling out three from that Remban. That one doesn't seem to have three on it. So I think that one has to be the three. It's got to be three, four, five, and the four must go there, the five must go there, the five goes there, the six goes there. And now that's a six by Sudoku. So now we've got yeah, okay, so, so this is either the 456 or the 765, and then this is the other one. So, so there must be a 5 on this Remban. That is what we can say for certain. And that means that 5 is in one of these three cells. And 5 is not here, because it would have to be with 4 or 6 on its Remban. So that is a 5 on this Remban. And we can probably work out, yes, we can. Yes, we can work out the composition of this Remban because, because the one has been missed out, we know the two will pair off with the three, then the four must pair off with the five. So that's a four, five pair. So four is now uh, in a sort of an arrangement. We've got two fours in those five cells of columns one and two. Now, how many fours are we expecting there to be in columns one and two? Exactly two, and they are in those five cells. So there are no more fours in any of these cells. So the four in this column has to be down in one of those three cells. That's very annoying because it seems to be able to be on the Remban or in the digit at the bottom. Right. Oh, no, I know what we do. Four, four, there's got to be a four on this Remban. So that's four, five. So this is now six, seven, I think. Oh, that's done. Six, aha! I'm getting all my pencil marks wrong. Look, this six now has to go there. That has to be seven by Sudoku. This has to be a two, three pair, and the two can't go there. So that's two, that's three. Those two squares are seven and eight, I want to say, which seems to be possible either way round. These two squares, I seem to have this already pencil marked in, but that's a 7-9 pair um, because of this 9-7 pair at the top. So those two squares have got to be 5 and 6 to fill this box and make sure it's replete with digits it should have. So these three squares are 2, 3 and 4 by Sudoku. These squares are 1, 5 by Sudoku. Fives are aligning in column seven and eight so we can ask where five should go in column nine and it's going to have to be almost on the Renban. yes and if this is four five six that one is not four five six so this must have seven on it oh uh, this is so clever so that's seven that's seven that's eight that's no longer eight This seven is fixing a seven and a nine in this box. Look, by Sudoku, that's no longer a nine, but it can still be a one. Um, seven must be, oh, seven I can actually place. Look, there are four sevens looking at box nine. So this must be seven. Oh, that, that's absolutely beautiful. Right, because why is that beautiful? Well, if you can't put seven on that Remban, you definitely can't put eight and nine on it because it's a four cell Remban, so it's going to need those digits. So the nine shifts up to here, and the eight, I think now, has to go there, which, which means eight is, can eight be on the Remban with a four, four, five? No, it can't, so eight is placed now in this box, because you can't put it on this Remban with a four. Four, five, six, seven is as high as you could go. So that becomes eight. Um, surely that's resolved, isn't it? Which one of these is eight? Uh, no, okay, maybe it isn't. So, oh, right, the other thing is, we now know quite a lot about this line. And that's because it's got a five on it, but it doesn't have a seven on it. So it must have, it's, 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 the maximum it is is six, five, four, three. So it must have four and three on it. Uh, so it doesn't have one on it. Oh, that still doesn't do anything. Okay. 
Um, okay, that's not a two. Oh, bother. <laughs> I think I'm getting stuck. Uh, it was going really well for a moment or two, and now I've ground to a halt. There's a nine in one of those two cells. So is there something I can say about this? This Remban doesn't have seven on it, and it does have four on it. So we're, tele we're selecting a slice of four digits from the digits one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there must be a three on this Remban, which must actually therefore be in those two squares because of the three here. Oh, hang on. Yeah, look, there's a four looking at this as well, looking at that cell. Sorry, I could have done that by Sudoku. That's a four. So now that's not a four. Uh, okay, that's very interesting, but doesn't seem to do anything. So I can see here, there's a six in one of those two cells. Now that aligns the sixes look in columns one and three. So in column two, the six is down here. And what I'd really like to know is that it's not there. For what reason can we say that that is the case? I don't think I can, I don't think I can say that, I'm afraid. So I'm afraid we're gonna to have to carry on thinking. Um, four, five. So this Remban might have six on it, but it might not. We don't know either way. Um, is there some way of doing this so that we can learn more about the world? We can. Oh, okay, there's a five on this Remban and there's a five here. So there's a five in one of these three cells. Is that useful? Nearly. I'm very close, I think, to forcing digits onto this Remban, but I can't quite do it. These squares are from six, seven, and eight. Have we got more? It's almost certainly gonna be Sudoku, isn't it? That's normally the thing that I forget to do. So let me just check whether I can do some Sudoku to help me here. Um, come on, Sudoku. You want to help me. Help me to learn about the puzzle. Uh, nines. I can't see how to do it. Uh, maybe it's... Okay, in this column, these squares have to be from three, four, and five. Is that helpful? The answer is I don't know. Six is almost very restricted in box nine. It's one of two places. If I can force six onto the line, it would be happy days because we because there's no seven on the line, we'd know the line was six, five, four, three. And this would be a one, two pair. Which might be possible. Uh don't know actually. Oh, ah, no, hang on. Hang on a minute. I see what we do. Right. The key is the twos. There is a two in one of those cells. So there is no two on this Remban. If there's no two on that Remban, then what's on it? It's a four cell Remban that doesn't have a seven or a two on it. So it must be three, four, five, six. So that's a three, four, five, six Renban. And I want to say that therefore I can fill it in, but I'm not sure I can. I can say it's those are three, five, and six. I can say that's certainly not a three. I can say probably some other things as well. But also now I've got to have one. This is not six. I've got to have one in one of these three cells. Now that's interesting because the one in... Box one is in one of those three cells. So these are not one, and that must be the one in box four. And now, 
And now I should ask where the 8 goes in this box and use my pencil mark. So that's the 8, that's the 8, that's the 7, that's a 6, that's a 6, that's a 5. We know that's not a 5 already because it's been forced onto this Renban here. But this 5 is giving me a 5 here, that's giving me a 4 here. Those two squares are now a 7, 9 pair, which is resolved. 7 and 9 go in the grid. 9 gets put in the corner, that puts 2 and 1 into those cells. That cell is now not 1. This cell must be known. That's a 5. So these are a 3, 6 pair, which makes this a 4. That a 3. That a 1. That a 4. That a 3. Okay, now we're getting hopeful, I think. Let's, let's put 3, 6 into those squares. Let's put... How is this resolved? So this square's got to be 1, one or 6 only. And two, three, four, five. Oh, I see. Yes, I do see. <laughs> this is beautiful. Right. So now, yeah, look, this, the seven here operates a bit like the seven here. So if six is on this Renban, this has got to be a six, five, four, three Renban, where it would become the same as its friend over there, which is not allowed by the rules. So you can't put six on this Renban. So the six must go there, which means that's six, that's three, that's one. Um, it's probably done something. It's given me a six here and a five here, which means this is not a five anymore. So if this, if this Renban hasn't got so this is one by Sudoku. So there is a two on this Renban. That's a one, that's a five, that's a five, that's a four. Okay, so now this must be a two, three pair. So there's a two, three pair in the bottom row. So goodness only knows what these two cells are. Let's try and work it out. These are somehow fours and fives. And there's a five here. So five goes in the corner. That's a four, that's a two, that's a three, that's a four, that's a three, that's a three, that's a two, and that's a two. And suddenly, huh? oh, that's a strange thing, looks good to me. Sorry, that's a different version of the normal Sven finishing. Um, must be because I'm, I'm using the test solver in order to do the X thing I did at the start. That is just magnificent. What a magnificent puzzle. That is, it's so surprising as well. I was convinced when I read the rules and when I saw, saw the grid layout, it was all going to be about mod three and possibly um, parity. But it's not at all. And it's, it's a very beautiful idea that there has to be a particular number of ones and nines in this sort of Maltese cross of the grid. And so much of that was consumed with non-repeatable Ren bands. That was beautiful. And the whole way that you got this, well, the whole way you got those digits then being ones and nines with this one. And that forced a one nine pair here. Can't remember quite what happened after that. And then we just had to keep track, which I think I probably did very badly, of which three cell rem bands we had, we'd used and which three cell rem bands we had not used. Um, and slowly it revealed its secrets to us. So Zeta Math, take yet another battle, my friend. Very much enjoyed. I hope you did enjoy it. You all enjoyed it too. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.